Both Christopher Nolan and Richard Linklater use time as a storytelling element within the narratives of their films, albeit quite differently. While Nolan plays more with the concept of time, Linklater focuses more on the linear nature of it and the changes that occur within that passage of time. Nolan, through films like Inception, Interstellar, and Tenet, portrays time through a more abstract and theoretical lens. You'll usually have a character briefly explain how time in this universe works, because it's a shift from how we normally interpret time. In Interstellar and Inception, Nolan plays with the concept of time dilation, which is a phenomenon of time passing slower for an observer who is moving relative to another observer, and in Tenet, he plays with the idea of reverse entropy. The ideas presented in his films are mostly grounded in reality, and every second feels very precious. There is anxiety around time and losing it. This is a theme present in both of these directors' works. In the Before trilogy, specifically Before Sunrise, there is anxiety about the day ending because it means that the fantasy ends with it. In Linklater's films, time occupies a very physical and real space. The real-life passage of time is interwoven into the narrative of his films. In the Before trilogy, each film is set nine years apart, and his film Boyhood was filmed in the span of 12 years. We see the actor's age, and that is a sort of cathartic thing. The characters feel lived in because they literally are. It feels like we're watching a friend. It imbues this sense of familiarity and humanity that we normally get mostly in serialized media. In Kaganda's experimental short titled Linklater on Cinema and Time, he prefaced it by saying, If cinema is the art of time, Linklater is one of its most thoughtful and engaged directors. Unlike other filmmakers identified as auteurs, Linklater's distinction is not found on the surface of his films, in a visual style or signature shot, but rather in their DNA, as ongoing conversations with cinema, which is to say, time itself. When asked what he thought was significant about capturing the passage of time in the span of decades, he responded, The power of it, I think, will be in the potentially accumulative effect of being invested in somebody's life. You are talking about Jesse and Celine and people who know these three films. It's kind of an, oh wow, I know these people. I've known them for 20 years. There's a certain power there, like a family member or something. While this film is bookended by 12 years, within that you really get a life, a maturing life. You remember how much it changes in those years. Nolan has a more analytical approach towards time, and he works from this foundation to get the more human elements of the story into play. Even his films that stray away from this approach have this sense of anxiety, and this race against time is still present. Nolan has employed a non-linear storytelling structure in plenty of his films. He uses this technique to get the audience in the character's point of view. We know as much or as little as they do, and so we experience the tension and mystery similar to the characters on screen. He is very interested in pushing the boundaries of how we think about time and exploring different aspects of the human condition through our relationship with time. Nolan has explained his interest in exploring time. In an interview for NPR, he said, Time is the most cinematic of subjects, because before the movie camera came along, human beings had no way of seeing time backwards, slowed down, sped up. And I think that went some way to sort of explain to me why I've been interested in exploring it in movies, because I think there's a really productive relationship. Cinema has always been about capturing time, whether it's a lingering moment or it's the entire history of a person or place. Capturing the flow of time on screen, whether that be the essence of it or the actual passage of time, is an important feature of film. Cinema allows us to highlight our past, portray our present, and show our visions of the future. In Gregory Curry's 1998 article titled Film Aesthetics Off, he stated that, Film represents space by means of space and time by means of time. It is the spatial properties of the cinematic representation that we observe and rely upon in order to figure out what spatial properties of the fictional characters and events are portrayed. It is correctly said that painting and still photography are capable of representing the temporal. By inference, by juxtaposition of distinct static images, by transforming temporal properties into spatial ones.
and by special techniques such as blurring and multiple exposure. But these possibilities do not constitute grounds for calling painting and still photography arts of time in the way that cinema is, for they do not represent time by means of time. Gideon Yaffe's 2003 paper, Time in the Movies, further clarifies this idea of time by means of time. Quote, Films, however, control the amount of time that the viewer spends on its representations. Films share this feature with performative arts. A film bears a loose analogy to a novel, in which the reader is forced to read one sentence every 24th of a second. So, say, for instance, that a film depicts a balloon slipping from a child's hand and slowly rising until it pops on a tree branch. Ordinarily, in the story that the film tells, the duration of time from the beginning to the end of the balloon's journey is just the duration of the images representing the event. In the simplest of cases, then, films use the fact that they legislate the amount of time that the viewer spends looking at the images out of which they are constructed to depict the duration of the fictional events, and they do so in a very particular way. The actual duration of the images is the duration of the events that those images depict. This is typical not just of duration, but also of temporal order. The image of the child releasing the balloon appears before the image of the balloon's popping, and, as a result, it is fictionally the case that the balloon is released before it popped. Ordinarily, temporal order of representation, as well as duration of representation, informs the viewer of the temporal order of the represented fictional events. All that to say that time and how it's expressed in film and how it's interpreted is this beautiful symbiotic relationship between the film itself and the audience. Christopher Nolan and Richard Linklater are two renowned contemporary directors that really appreciate this element of time within cinema and are able to explore it and quote unquote sculpt time as Tarkovsky deftly put it. If you made it this far, comment down below your favorite film by Nolan or Linklater or just a film that deals with time. See you next video. Can't wait for this to be.